September 1st, to his credit, he was appointed the General Secretary of the Haryana Pradesh Youth Congress when he was just 17 and made the President of the Indian Youth Congress for five years. And today, he is the youngest minister in the Haryana cabinet. Meet Randeep Singh Surjewala, a young politician who learned his political lessons from his father, Shamsher Singh Surjewala, a former Haryana minister. Randeep was first elected to the state assembly from the Nirvana constituency in 1996 and again in 2005 when he defeated the then Haryana chief minister Om Prakash Chautala. Currently the power, water supply, sanitation and parliamentary affairs minister in the Haryana cabinet, his future surely looks bright. Many thanks for joining us on Young Turks. You've been in politics for a while now. You fought your first assembly election in 1996. You defeated the then Chief Minister Chautala in 2005. Do you mind how different is this election going to be? Well, each election is different. And this one is far, far different. The national parties, both the Congress and the BJP, have a bigger challenge of not only uh, standing up to their agenda, but making a cohesive, governable, presentable, and a government that would deliver for, for the people of India. So you're seeing an increasingly fractured mandate and it's going to be kingmakers or queenmakers that are going to call the shots? <laughs> well, that's a million dollar question. I hope not. I do think that Congress is going to improve on its tally. Uh, we have done fairly well. The problem, I suppose, for UPA is that the allies are shrinking a little. That's how apparently it appears. Also, I also feel the large fractured mandate Ultimately, in the long run, it's not good for the very concept of the Indian That's nation. That's exactly what I was going to ask you because then it becomes boils down to the compulsion of coalition politics and there is no national agenda. At least we've seen the national agenda being hijacked by regional aspirations, by regional parties, while there is the, the upside of, you know, the shift of power between the centre and the state. But this doesn't seem to be going down the road that we would like it to go down. I appreciate that. See, in federalism, it's natural. The democracy is maturing. We, how old we are? Only 60 years old? And I suppose that's part of the churning process. Eventually, the, the mainstream parties, the Indian National Congress, not only has to set up a national agenda, but also has to take care of regional aspirations, merge the two and build a consolidated how difficult set is it, of idea. How difficult is it to balance that? Because you've been part of the Haryana Pradesh Congress. You've also been part of the Congress's agenda at the national level. You've been the youngest secretary of the AICC. How difficult is it to balance the national agenda with regional aspirations? It is difficult. It's not impossible. And uh, it's time the Indian nation, the Indian state, did take care of regional aspirations. What a person or a young person in Northeast feels is very, very important regionally for him or her. Hmm. Same way for a Keralite or a Telugu or a Andhraite or a Gujarati or a, or a Kashmiri or a Ladakhi, how they feel hmm. about how they should be governed, ruled, deci things decided is sure. very important. Sure. You have to merge that with the concept of Indian nation and that's the real challenge. What, how did you overcome this challenge? Because you know you were the Youth Congress leader uh, for five years. That's the longest term that anybody has actually served as far as the Youth Congress was concerned. What was it like for you to actually mobilize support at, the, at that level? And how receptive was the Congress to new ideas, to new energy, to new enthusiasm? There are really two questions you are asking. The whole beauty about the, the giant old body called the Indian National Congress is it is an evolutionary body. It evolves. Every decade it evolves. Sometimes we feel the process is slow, but it evolves with the leadership. I always say, International Congress is not only a, it's, it's not really a cadre based party. It's an issue based, personality driven, mass movement. So what is the, what is the big idea for the this election? The big idea is that youth must be the vehicle of change. That's okay. the big idea. And that is the Rahul Gandhi sort of idea in that sense? Well, it's also because it's a young country. 62% yeah. of people are below 35. Mm. And by 2010, about 73% of people will be below 40. So you're looking at the youngest nation of the world. Okay, I want to talk to you about that because I remember, uh, you know, at the start of the year, you were addressing a corporate uh, 
seminar in that sense and your advice to corporate leaders and you said that in today's world growth or sustenance cannot be measured alone by investing in physical assets like factories, offices and machinery but by investing in managing intellectual capital. Now corporate India has understood that. Has political India understood that? Oh certainly. If you see Indian National Congress has gone across the country. We picked up professionals. We've added them into various rungs of the party. My point was a larger point. I'm not necessarily talking about the induction of uh, youth into the Congress party, but right. I'm talking about what the Congress as the largest national party or perhaps the largest national party at this end of the election could do to fulfill the expectations and the aspirations of the youth of this country. Because, you know, when we talk about education, when we talk about health care, you know, the budget goes up. But in terms of actual outcome, very little has actually changed on the ground. Shaheen, for years together, nobody dedicated a certain amount of budget for education. It's only in last four years that we brought in the education cess and increased the education budget many fold. What is Narega but a move to bring trans uh, transformation right at the grassroots? What is Bharat Nirman? To, to ensure that the benefits percolate down and then the social costs that are, that are really uh, involved in it, they percolate in a manner that it has multiple benefits for the society at large. Hmm. And there is no magic wand or formula that I do this or I rub this and India is transformed. We have to ensure that the change comes from the bottom. Mm. It has to come from within and it has to percolate to everyone, to the last man in the line. Okay. One of the other things that you spoke about and you know this was something that you asked Corporate India to do was to have a customer first policy. But what about a voter first policy as far as Indian politicians are concerned? Because year after year, day after day, politicians seem to be self-obsessed. They seem to be worrying about where they stand, where they fit in in the hierarchy as opposed to what they should be doing for the people and that's where a large chunk of the frustration, especially in the youth, comes from. There is that problem among the politicians, that there is a problem in the system there. And each one of us, when we introspect, I suppose time has come to look beyond oneself. Hmm. Also maybe beyond the political boundaries of parties. But are you seeing that happen? Because you know, you're talking about breaking free from political boundaries. But if you're in opposition, you will oppose the very reforms that you put forward. We've seen it happen year after year. We've seen it happen government after government. No, I don't think so. See, the process of economic liberalization that Congress started, we supported it in many ways, even when we were in opposition, at the cost of being um, accused of colluding with BJP, yeah. if I may say. Unfortunately, it didn't really happen uh, reciprocally. BJP did not really support economic liberalization or changes that we brought in. But that's one thing. I'm not, I'm not in a blame game here. All I'm saying as political people, we need to look beyond ourselves and we need to start looking at people's problems. There is a problem. We do not look, we, we, as you rightly said, we are trying to find slots for ourselves. We got to find slots for India and for the young because they are the ones who are going to drive this country forward. Okay, you know, since we're talking about economic reforms and economic stability now, Haryana as has emerged as one of the top investment destinations in the country. You've managed to get what I think the last count about 40,000 crore rupees of additional investments since the government took over four years ago. How have you managed to actually infuse confidence in the minds of investors? Only two things. Sincerity of purpose and our commitment to ensure that we are going to change the whole demography of Haryana. It was an agricultural state. Now 38% of our GDP is from services sector. We brought in investment worth 40,000 crores as against 37,000 crores in 37 years. We have seen a growth rate of over 12%. That's highest in Asia. Much higher than Gujarat as Mr. Modi often puts. We've, uh, we make uh, two-thirds of all motorcycles in the country. One-fourth of all tractors in the country. Manufacturing base, services base and agricultural base. See, it's all it takes, I, I believe, is sincerity of purpose, a, a good law and order, and um, ensuring that the bureaucracy delivers what you say. I want to ask you how you've gone about selling the idea of reforms to the masses because the Haryana example is different from what we've seen. Let me just talk about special economic zones. We've seen violent protests 
as far as SEZs are concerned in different parts of the country, Maharashtra being just one of them. Haryana uh, by far has probably had the smoothest sort of transition as far as SEZs are concerned, the Reliance SEZ for instance. How, how did you manage that? Simple. We made farmers and the landowning classes and the laborers partners in SCZs. We said A, we will not acquire land. Let the person setting up SCZ go and acquire the la land himself or herself. B, we said if we acquire land, you have to pay X amount of compensation which is much more than even market price and royalty for 33 years. So, pa uh, farmer or the landowner Mm. feels a partner in SCZ mm. and we ensured, we, we effectively campaigned, we pointed out that ultimately SCZ means employment, mm. SCZ means progress, SCZ means putting Haryana on the national map and international map and they, they, they understood this and we succeeded.